Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor and you're listening to episode 141 of the Listening Time Podcast. I hope everyone is doing excellent and I hope that you're ready uh, to practice your English listening with another episode. Today, I'm going to talk about a really relevant topic, uh, which is the Super Bowl. Uh, I'm sure most of you have heard of this before. This is uh, the biggest sporting event in the U.S. Uh, this is the final game of the NFL, the National Football League. So this uh, event, I think, will take place maybe two days or so before this episode is released. Uh, and so this will be a topic that a lot of people are talking about. So uh, someone requested this topic and I thought it would be a good idea to talk a little bit about this because this is an element of American culture and I'm sure it will be educational for you to learn about the Super Bowl, even if you're not a big sports fan. So this should be an interesting episode. And remember that if you want my advanced episodes where I speak fast, then make sure to become a Listening Time family member and you'll get two new advanced episodes every month. And the link to that is below in the episode description. That's patreon.com slash listening time. And if you feel ready to practice with my conversations that I have with other American English teachers from around the country, then make sure to sign up for my U.S. Conversations podcast and you'll get a new long conversation every month with the transcript and with the definitions of keywords and phrases. So the link to that is also in the description below. That's patreon.com slash US conversations. And as always, please give this podcast a five star rating on Spotify or Apple podcasts, and please share it with your friends and your family members who are learning English. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl this year in 2024 will take place on February 11th. And I think this episode will be released on the 13th, if I'm not mistaken. So the Super Bowl probably just happened <laughs> if you're listening to this episode uh, the week uh, that it comes out. So people might be talking about it. You might have heard about it in the news or on social media. And the first thing that is important to know about the Super Bowl is that it's the biggest national sporting event in the U.S., uh, by far, I think. <laughs> when we say by far, we're saying uh, by a wide margin. It means that this is in first place and the second place one is far behind. So the Super Bowl is by far the biggest national sporting event in the U.S. And football, American football, of course, is the most popular sport in the U.S. This is the sport that many people watch. Uh, more people watch this sport than any other sport. So it's become uh, maybe the new national sport uh, if we have one. I don't think we have one in the U.S., but if there were a national sport, it would probably be football nowadays. Whereas a hundred years ago, it would have been baseball. So 
uh, I think. <laughs> I'm not a, a big sports history buff, so I can't tell you for sure, but I would say so. By the way, we can use the word buff to talk about someone who is uh, a fanatic of a certain topic, a certain, um, let's say, field or discipline or something that they know a lot about. Uh, oftentimes, we use this with history. If someone is a history buff, that means they know a lot about history. They consume a lot of educational material about history. They get excited about the topic. That's a history buff. So I'm not a sports history buff. So some of my opinions might not be 100% accurate. But I think that baseball uh, was the national sport in the past. And now it seems like it's football. So this sporting event, the Super Bowl, is so popular that many, many non-football fans also watch it. Even people that don't follow football at all. People that haven't watched a single game all season, they might still watch the Super Bowl. So you can imagine how popular this event is. And another thing to remember is that most Americans only watch national sports. This means that they only watch sports uh, that are played um, in leagues that are uh, with only American teams, uh, or sometimes one Canadian team. Uh, Toronto sometimes has <laughs> uh, a team that is part of uh, our national league uh, for different sports. Um, but for the most part, just American teams. And so if you think about our major sports like football and basketball and baseball, um, the games that people watch in the U.S. are games that are played between two American teams, right? The New York Yankees versus the Boston Red Sox or uh, the New England Patriots versus the Kansas City Chiefs, right? They're two American teams, not teams from different countries. And this is different from the rest of the world in most cases, because in most countries around the world, soccer is the biggest sport and one of the most exciting uh, things about soccer throughout the year is that there are international competitions played, right? Like the World Cup, for example, and many other international competitions. So Americans don't usually watch these, and our sports don't usually involve international teams, except for Toronto sometimes. <laughs> uh, besides that, it's just an American league with American teams, with Americans watching. Obviously, people from other countries sometimes watch our sports as well. But in terms of uh, what Americans watch, um, Americans watch American sports for the most part. Uh, if you watch international sports as an American, you're in the minority. So you can imagine that this sporting event, uh, which is for an American sport, the most popular one that even non-football fans are interested in watching in terms of uh, this final game, the Super Bowl, you can imagine how many people watch this event. It's very, very popular in the U.S. And you might ask, what is the Super Bowl? 
really. What is this? Well, as I mentioned, it's the final game of the NFL. And uh, how it works is that there are 32 different NFL teams. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I'm just going off of my uh, prior knowledge. Uh, I didn't look this up, so hopefully uh, I'm not uh, mistaken here. But from what I remember back in the days when I used to watch football, there are 32 teams in total, and these teams are divided into two conferences, we call them. The AFC, the American Football Conference, and the NFC, the National Football Conference. And each of these conferences has four divisions based on the geography of the US. So uh, the North, the South, the East, and the West. So you have an AFC West division and an NFC West division and an AFC North division and an NFC North division, etc. And so all of these different teams in these different divisions in these two conferences, they play uh, against each other throughout the regular season. And then we have the playoffs after the regular season. The playoffs refer to the phase um, after the regular season that only certain teams qualify for, only the top teams. And then during the playoffs, uh, there are different rounds in which uh, teams are eliminated until finally there are only two teams remaining, one team from the AFC and one team from the NFC. And these two teams play against each other in the Super Bowl. So that's how uh, the teams are determined uh, who will play in the Super Bowl. And then whoever wins the Super Bowl is the champion of the whole NFL, right? They are the winners for that season. So uh, this is the case in most sports, I think. At the end of every season, there's one team that uh, is considered the champion. And that's the case for the Super Bowl. Whoever wins is the champion for that year. And uh, there are some important differences to uh, consider uh, when talking about American sports like football and uh, soccer in other countries uh, that will also help you understand uh, the excitement of the Super Bowl. So uh, one really big difference uh, that you can see in American sports when you compare them to uh, soccer in most countries, this is not always the case, but I think most of the time it is. Uh, that is that in American sports, there's usually a different team at the top, uh, a different champion every year. It doesn't always happen like that, of course, but most years, uh, the champion is a different champion uh, from the previous year's champion. And why is that? Well, in American sports, uh, of course, we have um, the money factor, different owners of different teams uh, have different amounts of money to spend. And of course, that's a factor, but it's not as big of a factor as it is in soccer in other countries. As you might know, uh, in most countries, uh, there are certain soccer clubs that have tons of money, and then other clubs have very little money, and the clubs with a lot of money always win. <laughs> They're always the champions 
uh, there aren't really a lot of other uh, teams with little money that compete uh, for the championship every year. Usually it's just one of the rich clubs that wins. Again, that's not always the case, but that's the case most of the time. In the U.S., it doesn't quite work like this in most of our sports. Um, there's always what we call a draft. So, for example, the NFL draft is this event in which uh, the different teams, uh, they draft or they choose different college football players. So the big uh, college football stars uh, eventually go to the NFL. And uh, the way that they do that is through this draft. And so um, the different teams in the NFL, uh, they are ranked according to how well or how poorly they did the previous year. So for example, let's say that one team was the worst team in 2023. Uh, they were in last place. They had the, the, the lowest amount of wins. Well, that team is going to get the first pick uh, in the NFL draft the next season. So they were the worst team that year, but then next year they get to choose their first uh, college football player before any other team. So basically they get the best guy, <laughs> the best college football player. So what happens is that these bad teams, they suddenly get a really good college star that's going to make their team better. And um, this process and other factors as well help to balance out the different teams so that it's not always the same teams that are good and the same teams that are bad. There are always cycles where a team is good for a season or a couple seasons and then they're bad and then they're good again and then they're bad and that happens a lot more in football than it does in soccer in other countries uh, so because of all of that the super bowl is often extra exciting <laughs> in this context because many times it involves a team that was bad during the previous years. So maybe there was a team that didn't even make the playoffs uh, one year, but then the next year they are in the Super Bowl. And so it's really exciting for that city's fans because they went from being bad to suddenly they're competing for the ultimate prize. And so you can imagine the excitement for many cities when their team makes it to the Super Bowl, even though uh, they've never won it before or they were really bad the last few years. So it makes it more exciting. And uh, knowing all of that, you also know that if a team does win multiple Super Bowls, uh, year after year, you know that that team is really special because that doesn't normally happen. So you might know about the New England Patriots back when Tom Brady <laughs> was uh, on the team and how they won Super Bowl after Super Bowl after Super Bowl, many uh, different Super Bowls. Uh, and we would call that a dynasty. Uh, in American sports, when one team 
uh, wins multiple championships in a short period of time, we say that that team has a dynasty. And dynasties are very special in the U.S. because they don't happen often. It's not like in different soccer leagues around the world where the same team uh, can win four or five times in a row and it's just normal. It's expected. Not in the U.S. That's very rare and so it's special when that happens. So about the Super Bowl itself, you might already know this. It's very flashy. Uh, that just means that there's an excess of spectacular elements, right? There are a lot of amazing things. It's a whole show. Uh, it starts with the national anthem, uh, where someone sings uh, our national song, right? The Star Spangled Banner. Uh, and uh, usually it's some celebrity or a famous singer or someone, I don't know. But um, it's uh, very uh, dramatic, usually. And by the way, this national anthem is sung at all of our sporting events, uh, our national ones, even local sporting events. It's not just during international games against other countries. No, even at a local high school basketball game, <laughs> they'll probably sing the national anthem before the game. This is an important element of the sporting event. And then, of course, there's the big halftime show during the Super Bowl. In the middle of the game, after the second quarter, uh, the, the teams take a break, and there's this halftime show. It's basically a concert. <laughs> uh, there's some famous uh, musician or someone uh, that puts on this amazing show for all of these fans. And it's very flashy. <laughs> it's very spectacular. And the commercials are also uh, important during the Super Bowl. This is when you'll see the funniest and most creative commercials, advertisements for different companies. And uh, this makes it more fun for non-football fans who are watching the Super Bowl. Some people uh, get excited for the commercials more than uh, the football game. And people will often talk about these commercials afterwards. Hey, did you see the commercial for blah, blah, blah company? Because uh, the commercials are very different during the Super Bowl. Uh, the companies that advertise during the Super Bowl purposefully uh, put their best effort and spend the most amount of money on these particular commercials uh, and people like them. So that makes it fun for some people. And people have Super Bowl parties. This is really common. Uh, people invite their friends and their family members over. They watch the game. Sometimes, <laughs> I say this because many people go to Super Bowl parties and they don't actually watch the game. They just talk and socialize and eat, especially chips and guac. Uh, guac is uh, a way to say guacamole here. Uh, so... People uh, might just treat it as a social event. They might not even care about who wins. They just go for the socializing and the food and maybe the commercials. So as you can see, this is very different from, let's say, an important soccer match uh, because pretty much everyone who goes to watch an important soccer match is watching the match. <laughs> They're not there to socialize, right? But with the Super Bowl, 
uh, it's a social event. The sport uh, is sometimes important, sometimes not so important. Usually, it's a mix. Usually, some people are really into the game when they go to these parties, and some people aren't, and they're the ones standing and talking in the kitchen or whatever. <laughs> so you have a mixture there. So Super Bowl parties are uh, very common, and uh, a lot of people look forward to them. All right, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say about the Super Bowl. Hopefully you learned a little bit about this tradition here in the US, and maybe some of you watched the Super Bowl. I don't know. Uh, I'm not gonna watch it because I'm not interested in football, but a lot of other Americans uh, are interested in this. So hopefully this episode was good practice for your listening, and remember that if you feel ready to practice with real English, uh, spoken at normal speed, make sure to sign up to become a Listening Time family member to receive my advanced podcast episodes. The link is down below. And uh, you also have the link down below for my US Conversations podcast, in which I talk to different people from around the country about interesting topics. And it's great practice uh, for you to start listening to and understanding uh, two people talking to each other. So the link is also in the description down below. And please give this podcast a five-star rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts if you can, and share it with anyone else you know who might find it useful. All right. Thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time. 